Author Kitty Kelly, how did you get into the unauthorized biography business? <laughs> with both feet, with both feet. Um, I was a researcher for the editorial page of the Washington Post years and years ago. And when I left the Post, I thought it would be an absolutely wonderful way to make a living. At that time, I went to editorial page conferences every day and, and provided research for the writers. And I thought, this would be a great way to live the rest of your life. It would be like going to school every day. And then I realized that writing articles would be hard to make a living. So I was asked to do a book my first book, the very first book, the one that I thought would make me forever, was an investigative look at beauty spas in America. There were only 12 of them at the time. Only 12. Now, this is back in 1978. And I thought, oh, this is fascinating. So I would go to every spa, I would stay a week, and I would write a chapter about what they were really like inside. I thought, this is it. It sold 14 copies. My mother, my mother <laughs> bought 14, and that was it. But I remember when I went to one, uh, one place, it was called Marietta Hot Springs, and I would arrive on a Sunday and I would stay for the whole week and then put that in the chapter. I arrived to check in, and the woman at the desk said, sit, sit down, please. Uh, we've had a problem here. We've got some writer coming from Washington, D.C., and we just had a death in the mud bath. A lady's just died. So just sit down there, and I'll be with you in a moment. And I thought, someone died in the mud bath. And the point of this book was that I was going to take part in every everything they offered, and I thought, no, I'm not going to do the mud bath. Anyway, that was the first book, and the next book was a biography. And who was that biography on? It was, it was Jackie O. And the publisher had asked me if I would write a biography on Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, and I said, you're crazy. I have read everything written on the Kennedys and on Mrs. Onassis. There have been thousands of books and I went to the Library of Congress at that time, you remember when they had the card catalogs, and I told him how many books had been written, and there simply couldn't be another book. And he said, you've got to write a book and get behind the myth. And so I did. I wrote Jackie O. And that's how I got into writing unauthorized biographies. And please let's tell your viewers that unauthorized does not mean untrue. <laughs> Kitty Kelly, how do you get beyond a myth? What are your techniques? Well, um, you know, it was President Kennedy who said, I think, that the biggest misconception is not really the lie, which is deliberate, contrived, and unrealistic, but the myth, which is persuasive and wrong. So what I try to do is I try and do as much research as I possibly can. I do start by writing the subject, because all my subjects have been alive. They're titans of society. They have some way influenced our landscape left an imprint in our culture. So I write to them and I say, I am doing this book and I'd like very much to have an interview, but I want you to know as a matter of courtesy that I am going to be trying to interview friends, neighbors, business associates, employees, former employees, and I'd like to be accurate and thorough. And to date, to date, and it's been over 30 years, no subject has given me an interview. So what I do, this is a chronology. I'll show it under the camera. Okay, and this is the chronology I did for Oprah. I read absolutely everything that has been written. So before I even do an interview, I've read all the books, articles, everything. 
and I put together that chronology, which is a benign, uh, factual, that one is about 103 pages, so that when I come to interview you, I can say, well, Mr. Slen, you knew Oprah in 1978 through such and such, and then I will open to 78 and ask you about some of the things there, and it helps because memories are fragile. You write in your book, The Family, The Real Story of the Bush Dynasty, I believe that the people we most admire most influence our country. So those are the lives I've chosen to examine. That's right. I do believe that. And I do believe that it's important to know their life story, how they achieve the power they have, how they've exercised their influence over us, and what constructs that life story. After writing Jackie O, was there any lawsuits? Did anyone pursue a lawsuit against you? No. And what was so amazing in Jackie O, I interviewed one of President Kennedy's best friends, Senator George Mathers from Florida, and I worked very, very hard to get the interview. At first he said no, and I kept writing him and calling, and finally the secretary, I think, felt sorry for me, and he agreed to see me. And I went to his law office. The interview was set for 11 o'clock, and I arrived at 10.45, <clears throat> and I waited until 1.45. When he walked out, he said, hello. I'm on my way to the hill. I'm so sorry, I can't talk now. Maybe one of these days. And I kept trying. And finally the secretary said, all right, do you want lunch with him or do you want the end of the day with him? And you know, that's a, it's a tough one to decide. But finally I said, well, I'll come in at the end of the day. I had an extraordinary interview with him in that he talked very openly about President Kennedy and his private life. And at one point in the interview, he was talking about John F. Kennedy sexually, how he made love. Uh, he described him as a rooster getting on top of a hen. And before I could shut my mouth, I found myself saying, Senator, how could you know that? I mean, how do you know that without being in the room with him? And he said, well, of course I was in the room. He said, Jack liked having us around doing it. Okay, I got that interview, I went out, I wrote the book, and I fully expected Senator Smathers to deny every word, because people do deny. He never did. Instead, when the Washington Post called him, <laughs> he said, yeah, he said, I said it. I think I was just run over by a dumb-looking blonde. Do you editorialize in your books? No, I don't editorialize. What I think every biographer editorializes in what you choose to put in. And you know, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. I really try and be, I try and show all sides. It, I, this is why I love biography, because you're telling the history of the time and you're trying to give a nuanced, complex picture, which is what most people are. Few women in history, you write, have had the power to stop the world simply by getting married. For five years, the widow of John F. Kennedy had been the hallowed object of people's admiration and overwhelming guilt. The minute she chose to marry a man outside her church and her culture, she dashed the hopes of those who had elevated her. By becoming the wife of an international buccaneer with a sixth grade education who fell far short of the inflated myth surrounding the late president, she broke the spell. But even as she tumbled from her pedestal, Jackie remained the cynosure of an insatiable curiosity and the subject of endless speculation. I wrote that in 1978. We're sitting here in 2013, and I would stand by that. 
Did you like Jackie Kennedy Onassis after you were finished? Yes, I did.